Hello Rutbags, it's Jade, welcome to the Survival News. Gonna be going through everything you need to know about the world of survival, whether it's on Xbox, PlayStation, or the PC. If you're a big fan of survival games, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you've got notifications turned on. If you want to support the channel, maybe consider becoming a YouTube member and get exclusive access to videos and early content and a bunch more. Anywho, what we've got on today, Fallout 76 is coming to the Games Pass. You may have seen this been announced a couple of days, maybe you haven't. It is going to be happening on July the 9th, but there's already a small few issues with their latest attempt to get players engaging with the game. Also tempering maybe that slightly contagious issue is the fact they've just announced a brand new TV show for Fallout Universe. We're covering that as well as the news of a big flop and fail on the Epic Game Store. I told you guys last week Conan Exiles was going to be the latest addition to the Epic Games Store. Well, there's big disappointing news. I'm going to be covering that also. Our Survival Evolved got another bunch of updates last night or yesterday. And if you're still wondering why it's so expensive to take part in the latest Summer Bash event, I'm going to look at details about what's going on with that too. As well as that, Grounded also did a new dev vlog recently detailing some of the in-game mechanics that you'll need to know about. Deadside, the latest pretender to the DayZ Crown, also have posted their roadmap. Pretty much their next big update coming towards the end of the summer is going to include a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll go through some of that and see if this can keep some of the players that maybe have abandoned it in the last few weeks. And of course, don't forget that cars, modular vehicles, or they should be called, is coming to Rust today. The update is live right now. You can go ahead and download in it. I can't wait to get my teeth into this. I will also be addressing why I'm not doing as much console Rust news. Simply, there isn't any console Rust news. Not any decent stuff anyway. So we'll briefly go over the rundown of that, remind you guys what to expect when they launch later on. And you guys have absolutely smashed it with my 7 Days to Die console update petition. We've reached 500 signatures. Let's see if we can get some more. Let's see if we can get to 1,000. I'll cover that briefly and answer a bit of criticism of why I think this needs to happen and what the power of a petition actually does. DayZ have had to have a console hotfix. That's gone live today as well as PC. So hopefully any issues or problems you've had with the latest 1.08 should hopefully be fixed. And we've also got more information about Hightail and exactly how they're going to be creating their lands, the procedure generated Minecraft slash unofficial sequel progression has been going nicely and we've got another blog post to go through so the creators of westworld the hbo series are now working on a fallout tv show and looks like it's pretty far in development it's going to be coming to amazon prime and you can well imagine we're going to see some twitch drops if you watch the tv show and maybe play fallout 76 or hopefully any version now with the success of The Witcher on Netflix being one of Witcher's or Netflix's most popular shows going, I really think this could be a good move. Fallout definitely deserves some sort of TV recognition, even if the drama has mostly been about Fallout 76 in the last couple years. So yeah, I'm not about to turn into a TV channel, but I may keep you guys posted on what comes next. So as I said, Fallout 76 is coming to the Games Pass and reportedly since the Wastelanders update, a lot of my rat bags have been telling it's a great time to jump in. Yes, it's had its problems and issues and I've definitely crapped on it more than most as well. But for sure, you guys are telling me it's definitely much improved. One aspect though that maybe still needs a bit of tweaking is their latest Battle Pass. Now what they've actually done is rejigged it as seasons and the first season is all to do with a spaceman going up against Dr. Zorbo. Now you get rewards pretty much at every level as you progress. Now, I do believe they're free season passes. I'm not 100% sure if you can actually upgrade it or use real money to get ahead. But I don't think that's the case. So it's purely just in-game. But one of the rewards is an ammo converter which can convert the useless ammo you have and pretty much convert it into points so you can keep progressing or you can get decent ammo back. The trouble is for veterans of Fallout 76 who are sitting on thousands of different types of ammo they never use for guns they don't like, the ammo converter literally will only take a handful of bullets. And not only that, it takes forever to actually convert them, put them inside, and then you get shifted back out of a load screen. PC Gamer's got the skinny talking about the problems with it. Although it's a small gripe, it does seem to be pissing off a lot of people on the Fallout subreddit. 
Now, I'm not saying I'm going to jump in, but who knows? Maybe I will give it a try when it hits the Games Pass next week, and we'll see if Fallout 76 has improved like everyone's been telling me. It will be available for the PC and the Xbox version of the Games Pass. Let me know if it's going to entice you to jump back in. Our Survival Evolved, the Summer Bash event, is meant to be something pretty fun, where you convert lots of beef jerky and you get these chibis. Chibis are pretty much little tiny micro dinosaurs that accompany you everywhere. They pretty much go in your offhand slot. The cost of them has been pretty expensive ever since the Summer Bash update, where it pretty much broke the game for Xbox and PlayStation for about four days. It's been incredibly expensive to convert your beef jerky, which also takes a considerable amount of time to make. So the wildcard devs did say they was going to be reducing the costs of this because it usually takes 50. And they've added that in the update that went live yesterday, a little small hot fix. But one thing that some people might not know is it's not actually showing on the screen. So if you are playing it and you're still seeing it's costing 50, according to Dolly, the live ops manager, it's actually going to only be 10 and 25 respectively. So ignore what it says, put your jerky in and you should be able to get a lot cheaper chippies and emotes. Dolly goes on to say that you will still need to put 100 prime jerky in your cooking pot for an event emote, but only 25 will be consumed and 50 for a chippy and only 10 will be consumed. This is their workaround so they don't have to do another update for consoles and PC. There does seem to be even some more issues to do with server performance. Lots of people complaining about servers going down, so hopefully that's going to be fixed soon too. I'm going to leave the link for Rustified. This little article pretty much perfectly takes you through everything you need to know about cars. The update is obviously going live today. You'll find them all along the roads, all over the map, and they come in three different chassis varieties, short, medium, and long. And generally, there'll be around 60 different vehicles spawning on a fresh map. The vehicles need fuel, they'll need certain parts, and you need to repair them. Just like you do with other base building parts, you're going to need a hammer and make sure you've got plenty of metal fragments, high quality metal and wood. If every, if the health of every module reaches zero, the whole car becomes a wreck and can no longer be used. You'll find engine parts scattered around as well and they come in high, medium and low tiers. Or you can go ahead and buy them at the bandit camp. Now you will need one each of the five engine parts regardless of tier, but the higher the tier, the more efficient the fuel is. Again, you can buy a vehicle lift to help you do some of this stuff, and this is available at bandit camps or compounds. Once you've done all that, you'll then be able to mix and match different modules, up to different 12 different ones with sockets, use and costs, and they pretty much either transport players, fluid or objects. Now the vehicles do decay over time if you leave them too long, and you do need to be able to lock them, so that is something you can do with special keys for each individual car. Also to the vehicles you now have different helicopters that you can now buy at the bandit camp. It's been expanded and you can buy minicopters and transport helicopters for 750 or 1250 scrap respectively. So no more finding small copters on the roadside, it's only from this location now. And with that means that the safe zone has got big changes, you won't be able to hold a weapon anymore, you won't take any damage in the safe zone, so no one killing you from outside. But don't log off in the safe zone, as if you're logged off for more than 20 minutes, you will be killed. The map has been increased slightly. Compound now has two more recyclers, and it does look like whatever summer DLC they got planned won't be happening yet. Looks like that probably come next month. Let me know what you think about all the changes to Rust, and how excited are you about seeing this possibly come to console eventually when we do get it. Now you guys know I've not really been doing too much Rust news unless there's actually proper news. I told you guys how I felt about YouTubers literally just gaming the algorithm. Last week Oblivion, a big streamer on Twitch, was make, mucking around and trolling people saying that he had screenshots of Rust on console. Now this was clearly a troll, these are not screenshots from console. But because he tagged the community manager and they spoke about it, everyone jumped on the bandwagon. Then someone asked him if he knew exactly about the release date. And again, he said the 26th of July. Now, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of other creators make videos about this, and you guys were flooding my comments saying to me it was coming out then. But he did recently admit only a day later he was pretty much having a joke. No content creators have been told when it's been released, so there's no point in asking them. And this pretty much illustrates exactly what I'm talking about. It's great to be excited about Rust coming up. So, yes, when there is proper Rust news, when there is information from Gary, or we find any proper leaks that have got more evidence weighted around it, I will always be there first, just like I have been for so much of the time. But until then, you won't see me clickbaiting the crap out of Rust. 
One thing that I will definitely keep drumming up support for though is seven days to die. I told you guys I wanted to start up a petition. It took me a while to get it written out. And I've now got over 500 signatures. Some of you guys have been donating as well. Please don't do that. It literally is a bit of a scam. This is how these companies make money. It gets shared around a little bit, but let's face it, no one gives a monkeys about a seven days to die update when they've got other things they're gonna be looking out. So just go ahead and sign the petition for free and save your money. Now, I have had a few negative comments saying why am I stirring up trouble and definitely some of them are promoting and there's a lot of people defending fun pimps and pretty much saying they've done all they can. Now, I'm not disputing the fun pimps have had a hard time, but they have had the game in their hands for nearly a year now. And as they admitted recently, 15 to 20,000 players are playing it on a daily basis. Just think about that. The game hasn't had an update for three years, and yet it's still getting more numbers than a playing Conan Exiles. So, a petition isn't really going to change the world. But what it can do is spark conversation, and that's what I really want it to do. The more you guys actually leave a comment talking about why you love the game, what you think the devs should do, or just give them some encouragement, the more support we might be able to get in them actually speaking to us. You guys know I've got a problem with the way they've spoken in the past. They've mocked console users on stream saying they should just go and buy a PC if they want to play. And I really don't like the fact that they've only really come out with two bits of information in the last nine or 10 months. So my petition really does break down and run down what I think they could do, but it's only a starting point. If you guys have got other ideas, also leave them in the comment section so that if the fun pimps do end up reading this, we will get some extra traction and hopefully they can address things a bit more correctly. I'd love to be able to do an interview with them. So if any of the fun pips are brave enough, I'll give them a nice time. I'll absolutely make sure they can get a crystal clear message about what they could potentially do in the future. One thing to definitely do though is let's get a hashtag going. Save seven day to die. If you tweet, if you do anything on social media, please use that hashtag when sharing the petition. That way I can scan and go and have a look and can really start retweeting and sharing it even more. I just want to get a conversation going about it with the developers. I'm not really expecting them to suddenly say they're going to do something, but for sure we can get them talking about it at least. Hashtag save seven days to die. So Hightower had a dev vlog recently talking about how they're going to generate their landscapes. It's really cool stuff. I'm not going to necessarily go through it in too much detail. But you can clearly see through some of the time lapses how they go around layering the different blocks and then start adding things like rivers and mountains and peaks. The biomes look gorgeous. I really like the style of it as well. It's got a bit more of a pastel style, a little bit softer than something like Minecraft Basic. And you can see we've got big desert environments too, as well as some dungeons and temples. They're also showing exactly how it all gets layered up and built. And then on top of that, they have them ruins or some of the towns and stuff and how exactly they get placed on the map. So it's really good stuff. I'm looking forward to following this a little bit more. Obviously, we've got a bit of a way away. It's not even scheduled to go into early access until next year. It's definitely getting a little bit more exciting each month when they show off stuff like this. So today on the Epic Games Store, Conan Exiles was meant to launch for the first time you can play it on that storefront, but also they were going to be giving it away for free. Well, something went wrong. Late last night, they decided to remove it from their promotion, stating it was coming for free. And then Epic Games tweeted out today, pretty late, that it wasn't going to be adding Conan Exiles for free. The game would come out in the future on the platform, but you are going to have to pay for it. Where's the freebies gone? Seriously, I'm not that crying about the game not being free, but it is a bit crap that Epic Game Store have been hyping it up for over a week and then suddenly yank it at the very last minute. Now, this isn't down to Funcom in the slightest. As far as I know, they didn't have a clue what was going on. Epic have just made this decision for themselves last minute. What normally happens is Epic will give quite a large amount of money to a developer to pretty much give their game away for free. So it usually benefits Funcom. So I hope they still got the money and I hope there's been some sort of deal and it doesn't affect them negatively. But it does seem like a bit of a crap situation. And I was getting hyped and excited about getting some more Conan Exiles content to you. I had my best month ever. Ever when Conan went free to play as part of the PlayStation Network Plus situation last year and I was looking maybe to do at least half that kind of number again. I have done a couple of videos, I'm going to make them patron or YouTube members only so you guys get to see them. 
And I will put them out once the game is actually live on the Epic Games Store. But yeah, a bit of a known goal, a bit of a weird situation. Apparently it's happened before with games like The Escapist 2. That got delayed for months and months and months before finally being given away as a free one. And that's also happening next week, unless Epic changed their mind again. So Dead Sides bring in a big roadmap or well, quite a hefty update towards the end of this year. They're adding PvE modes, they're adding airdrops, they're adding helicopter sites. They've also got brand new locations like underground bunkers and a whole host of new weapons, new armor piecements and attachments. Scopes are also coming or have just been implemented into the game as well. All in all, it's looking pretty good for the development of this game. I have to say, I didn't think much of it when I gave it a try, but there's definitely potential here, and the developers do seem to be working at quite a speed. The kind of stuff they're putting in is definitely what you want to see with an early access game in its first few months. So for sure, I may give this another try once they get this 1.8 update out, and I'm guessing it's going to be towards August time. It's so not the biggest news, but I did have that hotfix update and it did go live today for consoles and PC. So it should be live on all official servers. Remember to turn or restart your private server if it hasn't taken effect. It's looking pretty good. Being able to cook brand new items inside houses properly without having to make another fire, brand new rifle, and I'm really looking forward to trying out the new location. I don't know though if it looks like you can actually get inside the ski lift chairs. That'd be really cool if you could, but I'm guessing not. There's so many of these games that I've kind of left alone because they were just failing, the updates were rubbish, or they just so were janky. Fallout 76, Daisy, Dead Side I didn't think much of, but most of them are coming good again or at least seem to be adding some decent content. So I'm hoping we're going to get there and I'll be able to give these another try. And finishing off with a Grounded dev vlog. Yes, I've been loving Grounded. You guys have been seeing pretty much a Let's Play episode from me every day. I spent probably close to around 12 hours playing the game in total when it was part of the demo on the Xbox last week. And the game obviously isn't out until next month, so you're still going to see a few more episodes, but I am getting towards maybe the last five or six now. I've been really enjoying it though. It's just a shame I only get half an hour to explore before all my progress resets. That's how the demo ran. The full game is going to be coming out. It's going to be on Steam, it's going to be on Xbox, and it's going to be part of the Games Pass as well. So you will be able to play it for free. It is going to be early access though, and it does look like there's going to be coming with maybe a smaller area or the kind of area we've seen in the demo. There's definitely some missing biomes. But really enjoying the game, absolutely loving it. I think this game is going to be huge, and we're going to be all over it. The devlog today concentrates on items and ways to streamline the survival experience. Talking about how you can put markers around and how you can pretty much get yourself orientated by keeping track of what's going on around you. I don't think it's revolutionary, but they seem pretty pleased with themselves. They also hype up the Hot Pocket, which I found a little bit fiddly to use, which pretty much is a quick equip box. So you can put all sorts of weapons and stuff in it. What is good though is that you can customize it. So each slot pretty much will have exactly what you want. And then you only have to tap the Hot Box or the Hot Pocket and bring up exactly what you need. So you might only want one food item. You might want three food items. You can do that and adjust it instead of having to always go into your inventory and sort stuff out. It's great stuff. Expect many more videos profiling, showcasing the game. I'm really looking forward to this one and Drake Hollow. It's going to be massive on my channel in the next few weeks. So there we go, Rat Bags. That is another survival show done and dusted. Go and sign my petition for seven days to die. That'll probably be it from me until Monday. Got a nice weekend with my kids and I'll see you, Rat Bags, for another one very soon.